Hey friends, Pastor Jason here uh, with a few updates for you with regards to our meeting again and 313 and a couple of other exciting things that we want your help with. Um, a lot of you have been asking, when are we going to be able to meet again? And we have been prayerfully and carefully with great wisdom and discernment and in conjunction with local authorities and um, other pastors in the area trying to come up with a best plan for what that looks like uh, and when we can actually meet together. And so one of the things that we wanted to present to you today is um, that we are going to be opening the first Sunday after phase three begins. Now, here's what that means. Um, if you've been following sort of the, the course of the news and the reopening phases of the mayor uh, Na of Nashville, what he's released, he has a four-phase process for reopening the city. Um, phase one and phase two each last two weeks apiece, and there's certain milestone or milestones or benchmarks that have to be met in order to be able to open up to the next phase. Well, with that said, phase one started this past Monday, and it's projected to last two weeks. And as long as things go well, um, as long as we continue to see improvement or at least stability with our current health situation, then we are going to move on to phase two. I think same thing with phase two. As long as phase two benchmarks are met, then we'll move to phase three. Um, phase three then right now is set to start um, or begin the middle of June, which means the first Sunday that we are looking at being able to meet back together is going to be Sunday, June 14th. Now, all of that said, we recognize that this is a very fluid date and it could change at any moment. But for right now, we want to go ahead and sort of nail down this moving target uh, and say that June 14th is going to be the first Sunday that we are going to be able to finally meet together once again face to face. Now, with that said, there's a couple of things I want to let you know about um, so that you can begin preparing for that day and kind of wrapping your mind about, around what that's going to look like. Um, the first thing is this. I want you to know that we are spending the next month cleaning, sanitizing, airing things out, wiping things down to make sure that it is a safe and clean and sanitized environment for you to come and feel like you can worship safely and freely in. A part of that too is we're going to be creating space in our sanctuary for families to be able to sit together with proper social distancing protocols in place. We are um, going to suspend our Hope Kids area for the time being, and we are encouraging what we call family worship. So if you have little ones and you're like, I don't know, they may make a lot of noise, bring them. We're going to try and create a, an atmosphere that's friendly and engaging and fun for everybody in the family. So don't worry about your kids making noise. We want them to come. It's a beautiful sound of life in our midst, and so we want to make sure that you feel the freedom to come and do that and bring them with you. Um, we also are going to have dedicated entrances and exits to make sure that we are minimizing the amount of multiple contacts we have in certain places. We're going to have sanitation stations set up throughout our main corridors um, so that you can make sure that you have enough uh, opportunities to wipe your hands and wipe stuff down. There's going to be uh, Clorox wipes or Lysol wipes or something like that there and hand sanitizer for your convenience. Um, if you want to wear a mask, we want you to feel the freedom to do that. There's no judgment here at all. Um, we also um, want to make sure that you understand that we are doing everything we can to make sure that um, people who feel ill um, feel the freedom to stay home. So we're going to continue to do our uh, live streaming server or our, our online services, um, even though it, there will be a little bit of a delay there. Um, but we're encouraging you, if you want to come, we want you to come, we want you to worship and feel the freedom to do that. But we also ask if you feel like you are coming down with something, if you feel like you uh, aren't feeling the greatest or you aren't feeling well, even if you think it's allergies, please just let me encourage you to stay home. There is no rush to be back together, but we do want to make sure that we are thinking through the health and safety of everybody. Now, that said, in order to make sure we maximize the amount of cleanliness that we have and the space between people um, while still being able to celebrate together, we are going to be offering multiple services. So we're going to have a 1030 in the morning service and a 4 p.m. service. And what that does is it gives us time between the two services to be able to properly clean and sanitize and take a breath before launching into the evening service. So you'll have two identical services, one at 1030, one at 4 p.m. with an opportunity for you to come and um, worship at either one of those. Now, that said, um, you're going to have more opportunities to be able to serve than ever before. 
Um, part of the reason is because we're going to have to change our format a little bit. For an example, um, we are not going to be handing out worship guides. Instead, we're going to have greeters that are going to be kind of uh, from a safe distance to make sure people are welcomed, but also to help people uh, find a good seat for them and their family. Um, we're also not going to be passing the offering plate because we want to make sure that we kind of minimize on points of multiple contact. Um, so we're actually going to switch to offering boxes. So uh, with that said, we're going to need people to uh, volunteer for one of our two services to help with the counting of the money, to help with helping people find their seat, to help create an atmosphere of friendliness and generosity and graciousness and welcomeness. Uh, we also are going to need people to help out with the worship team and with the tech team and all of that kind of stuff. So um, just be aware that those opportunities, we're going to make them available to you in the next several weeks as we prepare to gather once again. Now, that said, I want to kind of move into the second part of this uh, video, which is going to be talking about some of the updates that are going on with 313. Now, as many of you have hopefully seen by now, um, phase one is done. And if you have not seen that video yet, if you've not checked it out, you need to go back and watch it. It is awesome. 313 has done a fantastic job of restoring and renovating the, um, the this church in such a beautiful way. Uh, many, as many things as they could restore with the hardwoods and the choir chairs and all that kind of stuff, they've done a great job of, of um, honoring the legacy of the church, and I'm just so grateful for them for that. And now it's time for us to enter into phase two. Remember, phase two involves a renovation of the sanctuary. Um, now, we're not tearing down walls. We're not taking out the stained glass. All of those beautiful things are going to be in place, and it's going to be awesome, but we are going to be restoring the hardwood floors just beneath the surface that is uh, under the carpet there. And so it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be brought back to life. I'm very excited about seeing what is there and being able to do this together and celebrate together in that space. We're also going to be renovating the fellowship hall um, because what we want to do is we want to begin opening up our doors to be a center point in the community for community life and community celebration. So we're going to start doing weddings once again. Someone told me not too long ago, we actually had a wedding coordinator on staff at one point um, here at the church. And so while we're not doing that, we are going to be opening up our doors to allow the celebration of God's union with people together. So we're going to be having weddings here. We're going to do uh, receptions here down in the fellowship hall, and it's going to be beautiful. I'm very excited about this next phase and what it means for us as a church of potentially having thousands of people come in our doors every year and having an opportunity to engage them where they are with the hope and the love and the grace of God. Now, here's what this means for you. A couple of things. One, um, we want to provide you an opportunity. I know a lot of you are wanting to see the space before we start meeting together. So we want to give you an opportunity to actually come and see the space. So next week on Monday and Wednesday of next week, we are actually going to be opening up the doors of the church for you to come and take a look on a, a guided tour of sorts. Um, we're going to offer two times each day, once at 10 o'clock a.m. and once at 1 p.m. on Monday and on Wednesday. So you have four opportunities to come and check it out. Um, now, we're doing this because we want you to feel the freedom to be able to come and take a look at what's going on, but we want them to be guided tours because we also want to make sure that your health and safety are in place, and so um, we want you to come and do that. So we're going to provide sign-ups for you. Um, if you would like to come and take a look at what's going on, feel free to click on the link below so you can sign up for one of these four slots. Now, slots are limited, and um, time is limited, and so we want to make sure that um, it's going to be on a first-come, first-served basis. If for some reason you're like, I can't make any of those times, then let us know because we want to make sure that you see what's going on here and have access to that. Well, there's the last two things I want to encourage you to do is this. First off, let me just encourage you to pray. You know, uh, we are really in a season of transition as a church and as a community and as a nation and as a world. And it's really going to be really hard for um, some of us to adjust to the new normal. Whether we like it or not, we are now existing in a world that um, has COVID-19 in it. And so um, a lot of the social distancing norms, a lot of the, the, uh, the financial and social fears that are plaguing us are still very much part of who we are and will be for the next several weeks, months, and maybe even years. And so let me just encourage you to pray for the peace of God, for um, just uh, the peace of Christ to reign in your heart and in my heart, and give us wisdom of how to really best connect with our community and reach them where they are. Um, the second thing I want to do, encourage you to do is not just pray, but also invite your neighbors, connect with your neighbors, get to know your neighbors, sit on your front lawn, a lawn chair, and just, you know, share a glass of sweet tea or, you know, eat dinner on, 
each yard and talk or whatever, but just get to know your neighbors. This is a really good opportunity. There's a lot of people right now who are looking for hope. They're looking for some sort of um, joy. And we as Christ followers, we as followers of Jesus have that living and residing within us. And so now is the perfect opportunity for you to finally reach out to that neighbor and say, hey, you know what? I love you. God loves you. Why don't you come with me as we social distance together in the presence of God at Hope Church on Sundays? And we can either go at 1030 in the morning or we can go at four in the afternoon. Well, Hope Church, I love being your pastor. And as always, it is a pleasure to be your pastor. And I can't wait to see you over the next couple of weeks, just a few short weeks away. We can celebrate finally together on June 14th as we worship our God and our Savior together.